In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, again our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is talking to the crowds and to his disciples and through them to all of us about the bread of life. And he is telling them that your forefathers ate the manna in the wilderness but I'm giving you the bread of life which am I I'm the bread of, of life and whoever eats my flesh is not going to die but live forever how many people and how many scientists today they are doing these, these researches, how to live, if not forever, at least longer, right? But they, they go nowhere. How many people there are that they did the heart transplant or other organs to live longer? But still one day, they're going to leave this temporary place. Because there's not, not such a thing to live eter eternally on earth. And why? Because we were made not for earth. We were made for paradise. We were created to be in the bosom of God. To rejoice with Him. But because of the fall, we were cast out. We were punished. So here we are exiled. So it's a period of time, and for each one of us is different. For someone can be a couple minutes, hours, days, weeks, months. For others are many years. Right? And no one knows exactly when the bell will sound for each one of us. But one thing is certain for us that this short period of time is given to us just to prepare for life eternal, for our return back home, to our homeland. What a beautiful thing. What, and what a beautiful and, and loving God do we have that even after all the bad things we did, we disobeyed Him. We rebelled against Him. And yet, He is waiting for us with open arms. Forgiving and loving. And even though we burned the bridges, what did He do? He sent His own Son to become man. To redeem us, to pay, to pay the price for our mistakes. This is amazing. This is a tremendous amount of love. He showed how much he loves and how much he cared for each one and for, for everyone. And how much he wants our return. He does not want us to perish. But he wants us to return back and to rejoice. He killed the filled cup for us. He gave this great banquet for us just to return. He, could, he made his son the bread of life. That's why Jesus is assimilating. So your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness to survive. But for you, I'm giving you my flesh. They looked at him. How are we going to eat his flesh and drink his blood? Are he crazy? Is he cool? Or what? But he is establishing this mystery, and many, many times he is talking about the wheat as the symbol of life. 
And as the, as the seed of wheat is planted and it physically dies, but gives birth to a new life. So he himself crucified on the cross, he resurrected to give life to many of us, to all of us, to bring us back to life. Because before his sacrifice, we were dead. And now we are alive again, as in the gospel of the prodigal son. My son, this was dead, and now is alive. Do you see? We are alive through the baptism, because through baptism, when we are done three times in the water, we are dying, representing those three days that he spent in the, in the grave. So we are dying, and we are resurrecting in a new life, in a life in Christ, tasting the bread of life. What a beautiful thing. And no matter how much the, as humans we are drained by the sin, He still gives us so many chances. As we heard from the Apostle reading, Saul, a devout, devout Jew, that swear by the temple, swear by God, that he is going to catch every single follower, follower of Jesus and put them in jail, and get rid of all of them. But God had a different plan. In his way, after he catch all of them in Jerusalem, in his way to Damascus, Jesus appeared to him. Why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you? I'm Jesus Christ, the one that you're persecuting. And he became blind. He was led by the soldiers to Damascus. He didn't eat or drink for three days. And the Lord appeared to Ananias and told him to go to find him and to catechize him and baptize him. He said, how, how do I go to this man? He had killed thousands of our brethren, of our brothers and sisters. And he said, he is my chosen vessel. You see, the killer becomes the chosen vessel. And it is strange for us to understand how God thinks, how He works, how He is judging, how is, how, how is God's judgment. Many times people is questioning why if He does exist, why He allows these things or other things or these people or other people. So, but it's much more than that. It's deeper than that. And I want to share with you an example and you'll understand. See, from one side, God is giving us these opportunities out of love and care. And as it says in the, in the prayer that God does not want the death of a sinner, but he, sh that he, he shall turn back and leave. So, there was a young fellow from the southern uh, Greece, the region of Patra. He decided to go to Mount Athos and to become a monk. His earthly name was Nicholas. He was tortured into monasticism by the name Nectarius. So he was struggling to follow the tradition, to be obedient to his spiritual father, uh, to make his living by working hard. So now he decided to go to Thessalonica to sell the things that he made in order to buy some 
needful things for him, for himself. So he went to his Gerunda, to his spiritual father, and asked the blessing. And his spiritual father said, do not stay more than two days. Two days and you come back right away, no matter what. So oh, he, w he went over there the first day, sold whatever he had. And he, there were some other things for the next day. And the next day, while he was going to sell the remaining stuff, as he was walking on a balcony, he saw a beautiful girl that right away he fell in love with her. So now he came, he didn't leave for, to, to return to Mount Athos. He, he was going around to see her again on the balcony. Well, it was, the time was passing by, but the flame of, of sin was burning him, so he threw up his monastic garments, shaved his face, and uh, rented an apartment nearby to see her balcony, got a job, and uh, he was talking to, to, to the guy that hired him, says, there, over there it's a girl that uh, I fell in love with her. He said, seriously, her brother is my best friend. I'll introduce you to her, to her brother. So he became friends with her brother, and one day he brought him home and the other one said, you know, this guy really fell in love with your sister. He said, oh, really? He seemed to be a good guy. So he introduced him to his parents and the parents decided to give her in marriage with him. Uh, the girl was very faithful. She, fear, she feared God. She said, I, I'm not ready for this. I don't really want to do this. I don't think this is right. But everybody insisted. So they married. But of course, he didn't say, didn't say to anyone his secret. So they had a boy. And uh, one day, the boy was already eight years old. He went with the boy to the beach. And the boy was looking at him, said, Dad, what is this black things that you're wearing? He said, what am I, am I wearing? Don't you see that I'm undressed for the beach? I'm not wearing anything. He, just, he said, no, it's on your chest, a red cross, and it's on your chest, and on your forehead, it's a red cross and some uh, like black wings. You know, the things that the, the monastics are wearing, right? He was blown like, when he heard this. And he said, okay, let's go, let's go home. So he was very stressed. He said, he was thinking, so after all I did, he didn't forget about me, about God. He didn't forget about me. He still th loves me. And he went home, his wife saw him very troubled, said, what's going on? She said, don't ask me anything, just uh, put something to eat and after that we will have a talk, a long talk. She said, okay. So she, she put them to eat and after they put the, uh, the boy to sleep and uh, he said, uh, my dear, I have a big secret to open, to discover to you. Uh, before I made, met you, I was a monk in Mount Athos and I came with the blessing of my spiritual father to sell my stuff and to come back, but I disobeyed. I saw you, I fell in love with you, and I had the desire to be with you, and I throw uh, my monastic uh, uh, robes and stuff and here I am now, and this is what happened today. And she said, uh, do not think about me and the boy. Now, go back and repent. 
God will take care of me in the boy. You go and repent because it's awful what you did. It's awful. So he went back. But all this period of time, his spiritual father with all the brothers at the monastery was, they were fasting and praying constantly for God to bring him back and to receive him in repentance. So he came to his spiritual father and from the moment he saw him, he kneeled and he was crawling towards his, his spiritual father and crying, saying, Father, I'm not worthy to look up to you. I'm worse than the prodigal son. And I'm not asking you to receive me back as your spiritual son, but as a worm. Receive me as a worm that crawls on the, on the earth. And uh, he confessed, he repented, and his spiritual father put him in a cave in, in the mountain. So he said, you stay here and repent, and I will come and visit you. So for the first time, he gave him three loaves of bread, and he came back after one month. So one month, he lived only with three small loaves of bread. After that, he came, so they had a discussion. Uh, he was now bringing him holy water and holy bread. So years and years passed. His spiritual father passed away. The next one that replaced him became the abbot of the monastery, continued the same routine. And uh, one day when he came and was talking to him, I said, how are you doing? It's like, now he became like 75 years old. I said, uh, well, I'm okay, you know. So, uh, I said, don't you want to, to come now back to the monastery? He said, oh no, I'm, I'm fine, I'm not alone. There is a white bird that comes and, you know, stays with me while I'm praying. And he said, oh, interesting. So, and this was continuing for another five years. So he turned 80 years old and the new spiritual father said, uh, so I, th I, thi I think now it's, uh, it's time for you to come back. He said, I don't know, I'm, I'm so sad that uh, uh, the bird uh, came so close to me that I wanted to touch it and it uh, entered in my mouth and now I'm sad that I, I don't know what to, to do yes, it now lives in me so and he, the spiritual father understood that uh, he was forgiven and the grace that he lost came back, the Holy Spirit came back into him, when we are sinning the Holy Spirit is departing from us and when we are for forgiven, the Holy Spirit goes back. So he said, now you're going to come and stay at the monastery and uh, the younger will take care of you. So he passed uh, away uh, like, uh, around 85 and they buried him. And after three years later, they dismembered uh, him and opened the, the grave and his body was intact and fragrant. So not only that he was forgiven, but he became a holy one. So you see, it depends on us how much we are listening to the word of God, how much we trust the bread of life, and how much do we want to receive the bread of life in us to, in order to, to give the fruits that God is waiting from us, because that's the whole point, you know, to be fruitful, not fruitless, not egotistic, not full of hatred, but full of love, full of piety, full of understanding, to embrace all of those that are in need. 
it's, it's not only in material need, in spiritual need. You just need, need to talk with someone just to spend some time. And you see, like, we are so into this temporal living that we give time for everything else, for our body. We want to look good. We want to do that. We want to go to the gym. We want, it's like, but when come, comes the time to do something for the soul, oh, we are tired. We don't have time. We have other responsibilities and so on and so forth. So, my dear ones, let us give the time for salvation. Because this is the most important time. No matter what, the, the world comes and goes. But the most important thing is our relationship with God. It's how we are receiving this bread. How we are preparing to receive this bread of life. And live with it. So may God enlighten our entire human beings, our lives, our families, our community, our society, our entire world, and lead us to life eternal through the life-giving bread. Amen. God bless you all.